Hey guys, today's video is going to be going over weight loss. Um, it's going to be a little bit longer in duration, but I hope that you find it fairly educational. And if you stick with it, you either one, um, learn something that you didn't know before, or two, you have a better understanding of a concept that you're already kind of familiar with. So weight loss is composed of two major factors, one being hormonal control and the other being calorie control. Today we're going to talk about calorie control. Um, so I'm going to assume that the basic fundamental understanding of um, calories in relation to weight loss is that if you consume more calories than you burn, you're going to end up gaining weight. And if you burn more calories than you consume, you're going to end up losing weight. Sometimes. So let's go over that again. The easiest one to grasp, if your caloric expenditure, the number of calories that you burn, is less than, the, less than your caloric intake, the number of calories that you consume, it's going to result in a surplus, which then results in weight gain. Next one, second item. If your caloric expenditure, the number of calories that you burn, is greater than your caloric intake, the number of calories that you consume, it results in a deficit, which results in weight loss, sometimes. So let's expand on that further. We all know that caloric intake is the amount of food that we eat in the day or the amount of drinks that we consume throughout the day. Um, and most probably know that caloric expenditure is composed of your workout, right? But what else is it composed of? What else creates the amount of calories that you burn throughout the day? So if we're going to break it in to three parts. One, the easiest thing to guess, your workout. Right? The more you work out, you're going to burn more calories. The harder you work out, you're going to burn more calories. Component number two. Your daily activity. So obviously, if you have a more sedentary job or a more sedentary lifestyle, you're not going to be burning as many calories as somebody who has a job that requires them to be more active, say somebody who's in construction or in bricklaying um, or a farmer or things of that nature. If you're somebody who sits at your desk all day, this number will be a little bit lower. So both of these are numbers that you can control. Well, what's the other component? It is your B, M, R, which is your basal metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate is the amount of calories that your body requires to perform its normal functions. So if you were to lay in bed all day and not sleep, just lay there, awake, breathing, heart beating, this is how many calories that your body would require to perform those um, vital functions. So the question then remains, if these are numbers that we can control, and to our knowledge, we're um, optimizing them to the best of our ability. We're working out for an hour each day. It's really intense. You're burning about 500 calories. Um, we're not sedentary throughout the day. You're up. You're walking around. You're moving a lot. Even if you have a desk job, you're getting up and you're walking around, trying to get in those extra steps. If we're already optimizing these numbers, and as far as we know, we think we're burning more than we're intaking. Well, why aren't we losing weight? The other component, BMR, is the number that you actually can control and increase if you're doing the right things. Because if you're doing the wrong things, this number is going to get lower. But we're not always aware that we're doing the wrong things. So let's go back to that. If you're burning more than you're intaking, you should be losing weight. Sometimes, right? So let's talk about the girl in high school who wants to lose weight. Um, she's naive. She doesn't know this isn't her fault. But she's been told that if you want to lose weight, you need to work out more and eat less. So that's what she does. Um, and in fact, she doesn't eat hardly at all. Well, for about two months, she's losing a lot of weight. But then it starts to plateau. And time goes on, and she's getting really confused, and she's eating less, and she's eating less. But what's actually happening is she's gaining weight. Crazy, right? Well, if this is the number of calories that your body requires to perform its daily function, what happens if you're not giving your body even this amount? For example, for me, 
My BMR, the number of calories that my body requires to, to perform its basic functions, is right around 1480, last time I figured it out. 1,480 calories is what my body requires to perform its typical functions if I were to lay in bed for an entire day not doing a single thing. So that means I'm going to burn 1,480 calories without doing anything, right? So let's say that that's what I did. I laid in bed all day. Um, and I had food brought to me, so I was eating. And I was eating, you know, 1,800 calories. So the blue is going to be my expenditure. The black is going to be my intake. So if I lay in bed all day, don't do anything, and I eat 1,800 calories, then that is resulting in a 320 calorie surplus. It would make sense for me to be gaining weight, right? Well, what happens when we add in these other factors? And I'm burning about 400 calories throughout the day, and then I'm working out, and I'm burning about 500 calories in my workout, which is then coming out to 2380. Okay? And I'm still eating 1800 calories. which will then result in a 580 caloric deficit, which should set me up to lose about a pound a week. So this would be fairly standard and is a fairly healthy um, mark to maintain. So let's go back to that girl who was in high school um, who started eating less because she wanted to lose weight. So all of the things remaining the same, she starts eating less, like an extreme amount less. This girl is only eating 1,200 calories a day. And the scary part is I've seen a lot lower than that. So she's still burning. Let's say that this is me. Still burning 2,380 calories, but I'm only consuming 1,200. Which is resulting in a 1,180 caloric deficit per day, which is pretty substantial. So let's say she goes for two months and this is working, she's losing weight. But after about two months, she stops seeing results. So what does she do? She increases that number even lower. And now she's only eating about 700 calories a day, which I've seen more often than I would like to. So I'm going to do some shoddy math here. That's 1,680 calories burned each day, which is insane. So... Let's look at it this way. If your body requires a minimum 1,480 calories to, to perform its basic functions, and you're only giving it 700 each day, your body's smart. Your body's going to catch on. And in order for you to survive, your body has to adapt. So what your body is going to do is decrease this number. And it'll continue to decrease that number until it can arrive at a point where it's able to perform its daily functions, its necessary functions, in order to keep you alive each day. Now, I don't want to scare you, but this is kind of a scary thing. Um, and it's something that we're not educated on well enough. Because I don't think that it's really been broken down for enough of us. And it's been ingrained in our heads that we need to, if we want to lose weight, work out more, and eat less. So a lot of people are finding themselves in this position. And this number isn't exact, I was just taking a guess. But so as time goes on, 
and as she is continuing to be around this number, this number is her, B, her BMR is just going to continue to drop and drop and drop. So let's say it gets down to around 1,000. You know, and it's just going to keep going down until it gets to a, a point where she's able, where her body's able to maintain itself. So if this is you, and maybe, you know, this was you in college, maybe this was you in high school, maybe this was you a couple years ago and you're not quite um, eating like this anymore, maybe this is you right now. Well, here's the good news. This can be reversed. Um, essentially what this is, is self-induced hypothyroidism. Um, your thyroid controls your metabolism, your metabolic rate, hence your basal metabolic rate, um, and it slows it down. It's like a squirrel who hides its nuts in the winter. The squirrel knows that it's not going to get any nuts in the winter, so it stores them. If you teach your body that you're not going to give it enough food, your body will do the same thing and it will slow down in order to compensate for the less calories, less energy that you're providing it with. Your body is that much smarter than squirrels. So if you think that you might be in a point where you have self-induced hypothyroidism, your metabolism has slowed down because you've had a history of you know, not um, having the proper education or being misled and you have continued to eat less and work out more without seeing results, how the question you're asking is, okay, so how do I make this better? How do I reverse this? Well, it's called reverse dieting. And essentially what it is, is teaching your body that, hey, like, I know I wasn't giving you enough food in the past, but I'm going to start giving you more food. So it's okay for you to start working again and start working your way back up to that, to, to what, to the point where my BMI should be. So say this girl was eating 700 calories. What I would recommend for her to do is to start eating maybe the next week 800 or 900 calories. To go into my fitness pal, plug the food in that you're eating, see how many calories you're eating, get an idea, and then make really slow increments. You're not going to jump, want to jump right from 700 to 1500, for example, because if you do that, you're going to feel like a lead bullet and it's going to be incredibly discouraging. So instead, what you do is about every two, three, or four weeks, you slowly increase your calories. You slowly re encourage your metabolism to start working better. This is a slow process, but it's one that's um, incredibly manageable um, and attainable. And the results that you'll see from it are just awesome because not only should your body be letting go of stored fat, but you're going to have insane amounts of energy from fueling your body the right way. Food's not the enemy, guys. Um, so... We have a better understanding of how BMR works um, and what not to do and what to do. What I recommend for people is that once you've figured out your BMR, and I'm going to link that calculation up with this video, once you've figured out your BMR, to never allow yourself to consume less calories than what that number is. Because then that's when you kind of get in that danger zone, that survival mode, that starvation mode, where your body starts saying, you're not giving me enough food, I need to slow myself down and require less so that I can continue to live. There's one other thing that can help increase your BMR. And ladies, this one goes out to you. So fat, well let's reverse that. Muscle is active tissue, fat is not which means a body composed of more muscle will burn more calories than a body composed of more fat. So muscle doesn't make you look manly, and in fact, it's gonna help you burn more calories. So that's another way to increase this BMR number. The amount of calories that your body naturally burns is to attain more muscle. If you guys have any questions about this, or there's anything that you would like me to further explain, please leave a comment below. I want to start doing more videos like this and start providing everybody with more information um, that I think that we should have been given in high school, but we weren't. We weren't. Um, so again, any questions, comment below. Anything that you want explained a little bit more in depth, comment below. Um, and if you have any stories to share about this, comment below. Thanks.